wonderful program here and we had a wonderful session today. Uh, I just have a few more questions to ask you. The question would be for all the young entrepreneurs of India, what would your advice be in terms of marketing? So the first thing I'll say is something that I'm going to like <laughs> is it is easy to build a business on someone else's money. You know, I've worked all my life in traditional uh, sort of uh, consumer product companies where you had to generate your own funds to fuel expansion plans, new product launches, new geographies, new ideas. Um, but more power to you because on the flip side, all the startup ventures are providing employment to millions of people in this country and therefore you're helping the government in its efforts, generating trade and commerce, easing uh, consumer pain points, uh, finding solutions for uh, human problems, so that's fantastic. The advice I would give is that, you know, startups typically tend to scale up very fast in terms of size, complexity, revenues, manpower and valuation. And therefore, within a year or two, they face problems that a normal organization faces in about 15, 20 years of existence. Now, the problem is that you are not yet at the life stage that you can handle that because typically you would be 40, 45 years old when those problems are coming to you. But you're 25, 30 years old. So you don't have the life skills required to handle that business situation. So hire people like us <laughs> to consult with you or hire thought leaders, hire mentors, advisors, consultants from people uh, and people from organizations who have handled that life stage and have handled that complexity. Otherwise, carry on doing what you're doing. Thank you. Name the one X factor which has taken United Reveries to a next level. I think uh, there is not one X factor. Uh, there are several X factors. We have the largest manufacturing footprint, mm -hmm. 31 breweries across the country, the strongest distribution network. You know, we have 80,000 outlets where we distribute our products um, with third generation distributors. Uh, so long standing uh, and really strong trade relationships. Um, then I would say powerful brands that have been built up over several decades, uh, sharply focused marketing programs. But if I were to think of one single X factor, it will probably be execution. I think no one executes better than United Breweries does. I've worked for PepsiCo, I've worked for Cadbury's, Levers, but the, the emphasis on execution, because most of, me, it's a media dark industry, you know, traditional media um, outlets are not allowed for us to uh, participate in. And therefore it's all about execution at the point of sale or point of consumption or at an event. So I think it's the best execution I've ever seen in my life is at UB, so I would say that is the X factor. Thank you. One quality which distinguishes a successful businessman from that of a struggling one? Well, I think there are several qualities, but the, the first quality I would say is humility. You need to be humble. You cannot be arrogant with your success. You cannot be arrogant with your consumers. You cannot be arrogant with your employees mm -hmm. uh, or with regulatory authorities. Uh, so humility goes a really long way. Uh, I would say the second quality is ability and willingness to learn from your mistakes uh, and course correct as quickly as possible before further damage happens. And of course then there are qualities like domain knowledge, functional expertise, leadership skills, soft and hard skill competency. But I would put uh, a lack of arrogance, uh, humility and empathy right at the top to understand because at the end of the day you're working with human beings. Even if you're working with technology, the technology has been created by human beings. So your ability to work with human beings, I would put paramount. Thank you. Uh, it's just a question what I have in my mind because you were just saying that your inspiration and your role model is your father. And it's the same with me and my own brother what we have. So for you, uh, have you ever uh, you know, uh, felt that uh, in your mind wherein you know, to, to, fa to have a phrase wherein he says, I'm so proud of you, my son. Have you ever felt that thing and how, how, how does that feel for you? Because for us, uh, f if my father, like whenever he says, I'm so proud of you, I feel it's like, uh, okay, that is the end of the whole world for me. So how is it for you? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great question because all of us have strong family uh, social structures and we grow up you know, with uh, our parents being the earliest and perhaps the most dominant influence in our lives. Mm -hmm. And when I said my father, I meant more from you know, a professional point of view, I think my mother is the most amazing woman I've ever seen because no one else could live with my father for 57 years now. Um, and she's got tremendous uh, resilience. She's a Taurus, Taurian, so she's a tremendous resilience, tremendous, um, you know, she's a survivor, you know what they say. 
And my father's been a difficult person growing up. You know, he was young, he was handsome, he was flamboyant, he was indisciplined, he used to smoke and drink a lot, and he was, he was, uh, you know, like a movie star. So living with that, my mother's had to tolerate a lot and survive with that. So having said that, I think parental approval is is a big role in our lives. And I see the way I used to crave for my father's approval, which, by the way, never came uh, in the initial years. And, uh, you know, in, in the initial years, it was almost like everything we're doing is not good enough. But in And today, he says, oh, well done, I'm very proud of you. So I put up this talk and stuff. He said, very proud of you. But he said, I think you need a haircut. So, you know, there's always that but. Mm -hmm. And I know where he's coming from. It's that old school where I say, if I just say I'm really proud of you, He's not done his job. He needs to find something exactly. to correct. Yeah. Uh, but really today, I, so personally, I think his appreciation came too late in my life. But it's also a function of the times that we grew up in. You know, parent, I mean, he says he doesn't remember his father ever saying a word of appreciation to him, mm -hmm. ever. When his father felt affectionate towards him, he would give my uncle, was my grandfather in the army, mm -hmm. give him a pair of boxing gloves and they'd go and knock each other out. That was his way of showing aff affection. And I realized with my daughter that I have enormous power over her because she seeks so much parental approval. I mean, if I say, if my, if my wife says something to her, it's in one ear, out the other. But if I say something, it affects her so much uh, that I have to be very careful. And I realize it is just like me seeking that approval from my father. I never got it, but I'll make sure that my daughter gets it because she just then grows up more secure. And uh, I would always ask, want her to ask me the question rather than some stranger. So yeah, I think that's a great question and that plays a big role in all our lives. Uh, parental approval and seeking parental approval. And you know what, Anusha, tomorrow when you become a parent, you must remember what your parents' approval meant to you. Yes. And therefore, pay it forward as far as your children are concerned. Thank you. And the last one would be, uh, what is that made you whom you are today? There's a spider on it. Okay, now there's no spider there. Uh, what is more? I think the sum total of all my experiences, never say no to any new assignment, never say new, no to any new experience. Always be open to embrace life, you know, whether it is travel, education, reading, watching movies, meeting different people, talking to human beings, different cultures, different cuisines, different places. Um, I've never said no to anything that has come my way. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that sort of helps you grow. But also a lot of introspection and reflection. You need a lot of quiet time. You know, I once had a boss who said to me that summer you need at least one hour free in the day just thinking. And I used to say, boss, how is that possible? You need work to do. He says, yes, you're doing this very well. But should you be doing it at all? Is the question that you need to ask. And you know, fortunately, as you get more senior, you don't do so much work yourself. So you need to think and reflect. Should this be done at all? Are we doing it well? So a lot of time for reflection and thinking. And for me, frankly, that comes in the gym. When I'm six to eight, when I'm in the gym, my phone is not, so I'm, I'm not taking selfies of myself. You know, you, uh, you may find one in five years or something, but I put my phone away and it's just thinking. So people ask me, you know, you're two hours in the gym or one hour, 40 minutes. What do you think? I said, my mind's a blank. And some of my ideas just come to me then. And very funnily, in the morning when I'm brushing my teeth, I get ideas. <laughs> so I actually have a writing pad and pen next to where I brush my teeth and I just write it down or just put it on my phone now. So we know when the, so it's necessary for your mind to be free at some point of time during the day, on a daily basis. And that reflection and thought and internal improvement is also what makes you what you are. Thank you so much. It was really nice talking to you and Thank you. Good luck, Anusha. Thank you. Thank you.